Hello everyone, this is Surya. As software developers, we would have created application using client-server architecture, where server would possess some sort of sensitive information. The client would use either user name or some sort of token to gain access to the resources in the server, isn't it? What if we were to say that we do not need any kind of username, password or uh, a token to gain access to the server? So do you think would it really be possible to do that? So that's what we are going to take a look at it in today's video. Without any further ado, let's get started. So we are going to achieve the whole thing of uh, you know, avoiding the password using a mechanism called Kerberos Authentication uh, Protocol, which, which is a network authentication protocol. As we mentioned, like, you know, we have the client in here in the server. Right in a typical world, I will call this as client. I will call this as server. In a typical world, when we request for some resource, we would pass the what of username and password, or it could be any kind of jar token or anything, right? So we will pass along with the request, say get off uh, user, right? So this is how we will send the request. The authentication information goes along with it, right? In this case, what we are going to see is like, you know, we are just going to use this and we will not use the username and password, but still the server would authenticate. And that's what we are going to see. Okay. So I'm going to erase this stuff. Uh, first thing that we need to understand is the realm. What is a realm? Realm is usually represented by a domain name. So it is a collection of uh, resources to which uh, which we are trying to provide uh, this authentication and authorization for, right? Usually it is represented by domain for in this case, like, you know, say if we have a company called Kerberos, uh, in which case we would have something like So this would be our domain name, isn't it? So if we have any subdomains, it would be like sales.kerberos.com or anything similar to it. For Just for this per demonstration purpose, we will just leave it to as kerberos.com. So this is the realm. So the second thing that we need to understand uh, between these two things is like, you know, the introduction of uh, another server with with respect to the Kerberos and, and and the other thing to notice here we are gonna only talk about MIT MIT Kerberos right I have an article in here uh detailing like you know all the information that we need to know um I will share it in the description box below okay uh so so the next thing that we need to know is KDC, which they call it as key distribution center. This is, uh, this should be, uh, on another server. What it does is like it's, it's, it is what is going to take care of the authentication and the authorization, right? Um, so what it has is like, it has three components. So one is the authentication server, the other one is ticket granting server. And the other is database. So what kind of database it is? So this database contains all the principles. Okay, so what are principles? The principles are mainly user principles and service principle. What are user principles? Say if I am a user using this client machine. If I am a user using this client machine to access a HTTP web application in the server. So it's hosted in the server and I am the user. So let me, so let's say uh, uh, we are having an application that's just a static application hosted in Apache. 
server and uh, let's say I'm the Apache user so I'm the Apache user so I'm just gonna use this machine say if we change this machine it's it's this thing is not gonna work that's one caveat that we need to know so when we change a machine we just have to replicate the same kind of uh, the libraries that we are gonna install on the other machine as well to you know uh, use it so that's one of uh, the disadvantages unlike you know if we if we are using a OAuth uh, it works across the board you can use it in phones you can use it in uh, in a web browser unlike that so this thing has to be mm, uh, the, the the some of the libraries has to be pre-installed in the server to to achieve this uh, mechanism that's uh, another point to note um, so let's consider him as uh, consider me here as an apache user and i'm trying to uh, i know access this html page that's hosted hosted in the server right so i'm just trying to access this page so here i would get a principle right so i would register myself hey uh, this is me apache user so and i i will have to register myself in the kdc's database similarly the server will also register itself in the kdc database uh, the user that i get out of registering myself as a principal is the user principal and uh, the principal that i get out of registering the service here is like the service principal it is usually represented as the username followed by at and the realm name so here our realm is Kerberos and and here here we have the service so this is the service that we that I talked about so how we have to specify it as we have to specify it as HTTP since we, this is the HTTP protocol uh so we will be specifying it as http and the machine name uh let's uh name it as uh, uh, apache server dot dot com and let's call this as uh cross client dot com so let's just call it as client this is this is confusing right so just let's call it as client dot kerberos dot com is the domain name of this uh the 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 domain name of this machine which is like the um uh the host name and this is uh the host name of this machine right so we will call this as here http and the host name of this machine is apache server so we will call this apache server dot kirby rose dot com followed by the actual naming convention at the realm name If we see the the real name is usually represented in the upper case, the whole name is represented in the upper case. We see in here. Well, so once we have uh, these two things registered in our database, we will have the these principle in this database. Now, whenever a user tries to access uh, to the uh, you know access, uh, whenever the user tries to access the server. What typically has to happen is the user would, the library that is provided by the Kerberos uh, would talk to the KDC and uh, make sure like you know this user is uh, available available in the in the system and uh, it will get a ticket for it. Ticket in the sense like you know a pass, a pass for it. So it will get a ticket for it. And similarly, uh, similarly, like you know, this would have its own ticket, uh, which we will talk about later. 
so what happens is like you know when i try to log in i would uh, i would uh, whenever i try to not log in whenever i i need to access this uh, server i would uh, some create some sort of uh, script that will run to to uh, get the ticket right so it will get the ticket meaning like you know this has to talk to the kdc to the authentication server and get the ticket back so the ticket that we get back is called as ticket granting ticket ticket granting ticket meaning this ticket will be used to call the kdc again to the ticket granting server to uh, issue another ticket which we will be using it to call the actual server itself okay so the point here is how this happens the whole thing works like a magic and we do not have to worry about it because this thing works on network and it's been uh, taken care by the underlying gss aps api uh, api in most cases right so we, so we do not have to worry about it so in this case like you know this database can be replaced by uh, the ldap ad groups the active directories are uh, from windows machine but for this uh, post we will just uh, use uh, the database that's provided out of the box by kerberos the next thing uh, what we will do is so we call the tgt then we will you uh, know ask uh, tgs to grant uh, a ticket and uh, this ticket is uh, again the encrypted block of data which will be used to communicate with the server and uh, once this this uh, this will you uh, know use this information and like you know authenticate itself and like if it is happy then it will respond respond to the server so the whole thing is like you know completely invisible what we will technically do is we will do only two things one is get this tgt and then just we will make an api call as c url get call get call of the machine right machine right so this is gonna give us the html back this is gonna give us the html back so there are only two things that we will be doing so one is like generating a ticket granting ticket and the curl command so when we do the curl command we will not be passing any sort of uh, headers or like you know there will not be any cookies so nothing will be there so the whole thing is taken care by this piece right uh, and whenever we get this thing as like ticket and this has a validity and uh, this would be valid based on the request that we ask for the very first time or uh, it it gets overridden by whatever it is in the kdc whatever it is configured in the kdc if it is like one day in kdc the whatever if you ask for 365 days it still will return uh, you for like you know one day so so that's 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 what it is so we would always need a ticket granting ticket to get access to uh, to get a uh, a ticket from the ticket granting server right only then we will be able to use that and uh, we will be using that to you know invoke the server but from the developer perspective we will be using this call to get the ticket granting ticket and we will do a curl and the whole thing happens magically behind the scene i have a separate video on like you know how to implement this in the ubuntu containers so i will leave the link in the description box below for your reference and that's it for uh, today you know thanks for watching